Everybody listen up. We have been, this is week number three in a series we're doing called Satan's Arrows, where we're talking about our enemy who is real. And it is not just like a little pretend thing. It's a real battle that we're in every day. And so he, uh, the Bible tells us that he uh, prances around or, or struts around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he may devour. He's out to steal, to kill, to destroy us. So he's not messing around in any way, shape, or form. He is after you. He's after me. He does it in subtle and not so subtle ways. And we've talked about a couple of them, some of those arrows, just like we had our guys shoot our arrows here tonight. He's shooting arrows at you and me, things like uh, our self-worth that uh, Hunter, who was here last week, talked about, you talked about in groups. Things like fear that we're going to talk about uh, next week. Things like guilt that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Tonight's topic is a little different because it's going to sound really harmless when I say it. But I think you're going to see by the time we're done talking in groups tonight how it can be very, very subtle, but be something that you really need to concern yourself with. And what it is, is it's the, the arrow of distraction. Distraction, okay? And again, you hear that like distraction. Okay, that doesn't seem to compare to some of these other ones. But being distracted for a lot of you is a constant condition. I'm looking at some of them right down here in the first and second row right now. And they're not even looking at me because they don't even know they're so distracted. They're not even aware. See, there we go. Case in point. You guys are preaching my sermon for me. I appreciate it tonight. So distraction is something that is very constant in our lives around us, okay? And so many of us run from one thing to the next, we have such a busy schedule that we don't even understand or see that, w that we have an issue with it whatsoever. We're so distracted that we can't develop a focus on any single thing in our life because we just run from one thing to the next. And you ask the question, what is a distraction anyway? And I think before you answer that, you have to ask that other question that relates to uh, in order to have a distraction, you have to have a focus first. So do you even have a focus, you know, or a purpose with your life? And if you do, if you can identify what that focus is, it doesn't just have to be your lifelong purpose. It could be a focus on, you know, school or a focus on a relationship or a focus on whatever it is. But then you, once you identify the focus, then you can identify sometimes what the distractions are more clearly, okay? Let's start with some simple ones that are all around us every day because all of you guys are required to go to that thing that we called school, okay? So if you're in class, tell me if any of these things would distract you. If you hear something like this in class... How many would that distract if someone's doing that with their pen? Raise your hand if that would be a distraction to you. It won't be for everybody, but some people, if they were making a sound like that with your pen, all right? How many would be distracted by this? Someone's whistling in class, and it's just annoying the heck out of you. Anybody? All right. How many would be distracted by, <laughs> let me see if I can do this accurately, by this? That's not a snore. That's like, it's like when somebody has a cold and they're trying to hock up a loogie, all right? And they just can't get it out and they're making all these god-awful noises. How many would be distracted by that? All right. Okay. How many would be distracted by, I don't know if I can do this loud enough for you to hear. Yeah. It's, yeah. I can't crack my knuckles where you can hear it in the mic. But how many, let's, where are my knuckle crackers, first of all? Who cracks their knuckles? Wow. Okay. How many are distracted by people who crack their knuckles and it drives them crazy? Aubrey and three others. Okay. Okay. All right. So there's a few simple examples of things that can distract us in class. Everybody listen. Shh. What I want you to think about, what I want you to think about is right now is I want you to think about First of all, let's start with this. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about this. We're just going to be quiet. You're not going to talk to your neighbor. If you have your uh, phone, you could write them down in your notes if that helps you to, to figure out this little mini list, all right? I want you to write three things on your phone notes or just think about them in your head that are important to you, okay? Three things that are important to you. I'll give you just 20 to 30 seconds. If Gabe's back there, we can play background music. If you're not, it's fine. Think about it. Write it down if you have something to write it in or just think about it. Three things that are important to me. And I'll 
whistle for Jeopardy song to be a distraction. Oh, no, I won't. There's the music. <laughs> He's so good. So good. All right. I give you 10, ten more seconds or till the song's over. Okay, you got him? All right, hold on to that. Now I'm going to give you, Gabe, we'll, we'll call on that music for one more time in just a second. Now I want you to think of, same thing, don't talk to other people, this is just you. I want you to think of three things that most distract you. Go ahead, go. 30 seconds. Three things that are the biggest distractors for you in your life. Shh. You're doing this as an individual exercise, not as a community. Three things that distract you if you were distracted and weren't paying attention. Okay, perfect. All right, Gabe, if you have that verse, first verse, put that on the screen, if you will. We're going to come back to that in just a minute, what you, what you uh, came up with. But um, this is a verse from 1 Corinthians 7, and it's very straightforward and simple. And, it, and, and I want you to check out the screen. Let's take a look at what it says. It says, I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. Let me repeat that last part. That you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. All right? So let's think about that for just a minute. The two key words in that verse are undivided devotion. Now, if we're being completely honest, what is... You know, what do we consider to be the main focus? What do you consider to be the main focus of your life right now? I don't want you to answer it out loud. Just think about that. Okay? It might be one of those things you just listed on your, on your little three. All right? So whatever that is, as you start to see the future in front of you, what do you hope focusing on that one thing will bring as a result? Okay? So if you're identifying just one of those things you wrote down or you thought about, as a main focus in your life, what do you think that's going to bring you down the road if you really, truly focus on that thing and get, get it done? And then I want us to think about this verse that was just up there on the screen because what does that verse seem to say that is the most important focus or should be the most important focus in our life? An undivided devotion to the Lord is what he says. An undivided devotion to the Lord. If you think about undivided, it's kind of like the opposite of distraction. Because if you have undivided, if you're giving your undivided attention, you've heard people say that before. That means you're very, you're, you're very, you know, reined in, you're focused on something, okay? So undivided devotion, so you're reined in and you're, you know, you are totally in love with and adoring, you know, this person, this individual, Undivided devotion is a really strong term, those two words put together. And that, according to what Paul says in this verse, should really be the purpose of our lives, that undivided, undivided devotion, okay? Now think back, look back on your list that you made, the three, three things that are most important in your life, okay? Does anybody want to share one of them with us? What would you put? Say it again. Jesus. That's a great answer. Let's close in prayer. God, thank you for Ryan Turner and his great answer. No, that's a good answer. Okay. Very good. Does anybody have a non-church answer? Family? Sports? Somebody over here? Mark? Life? Okay. Grades? Okay. Loving and caring for people. That's good. Friends? Okay, good. That's a good sampling right there of things that are important to us. Very, very good. Now, Someone want to share one of the things of the three things that are most distracting for you in your life? Ryan? What? Yourself. You distract yourself, okay? Your phone, okay? Your girl. <laughs> so kind. <laughs> Is any here? Netflix, that's good. Uh, friends throwing grapes in class, okay? Anybody else? Yeah? Boys are very distracting. Stay away from them as long as you can, yeah? Girls are equally, yes. Okay, 
Glad we covered both sides there. That's good. Well, well played. Okay. Think about those things. Okay. Now, those are great answers. Now, listen. Well, let me, let me, let's do the second verse too, and then, we'll, and then we'll bring this together with, with the answers you just gave, which were great. Okay. Second verse that we have. We only have two verses for tonight here, and then you'll look at one more in small groups. But this one is from Mark. Check out the screens and what it says here, because this is really, really applicable to where we live. Okay. Here's it says, Jesus is speaking here. It says, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Okay? So let me say it one more time. The worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires for, for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfaithful. So tell me, what are the distractions that are mentioned in that verse? Somebody tell me one of them. Okay, wealth and money. Desires of the world. And what was the other one? Worries, yes. So, man, that does that cover a lot of things or what? If you really think about that, those three categories, that hits on a lot of stuff, okay? For sure. Those are legitimate distractions, I think, for a lot of people. And those things are not just distractions. If you paid attention to that verse, Jesus is speaking here, and he's saying these things aren't just going to distract you. They will take you out. If you're being choked, okay, are you, you know, is it just a distraction or is it like you're fighting for your life? I mean, it can be a, a mild choking, but if someone's really trying to choke you, they're trying to take you out. And that's what the context of what's being said here, that these things are powerful enough to take you out completely. Any one of them or any combination of them can choke you completely, can choke the word of God from getting to you. And that's kind of crazy. Now, I thought of this when I thought of that girl from American Idol, uh, Kay, who was on there a minute ago, our girl. Because she's a regular 19-year-old kid. She's not much older than most of you guys in the room here. And she's gone through a lot of stuff in her life, okay, with her family and even homelessness and, and, and not having a lot and that sort of thing. And do you think, I mean, I was just thinking, I was watching that video. Do you think that she was, would fall prey and be suspect to these three categories? She would worry like crazy about where they're going to spend the night and what's going on with not only her but her family. She would be certainly, uh, you know, uh, needing money and wealth of any kind whatsoever. And then thirdly, combined with that, she would probably play the comparison game and be very envious of other people who had so much more than she had and had would desire to have what they have, as we often do, want to look like somebody or be like somebody or have what they have. And I just think about that in, in just that one real-life example of this girl who was, you know, just on TV in the last week or two and thinking about the struggles that, that she has. But what I really noticed in her, and I don't know, I know she goes to church apparently and all that. I don't know where she is in the relationship with God. But what I really noticed about her in the midst of all that is a really grateful heart. She really seemed to have, she really seemed to be okay. I, I know she had to battle with all these things, but she really seemed to be okay in the spot where God had placed her right then, not just because she was on American Idol. I mean, before she ever got in that little contest, just in life and, and, and having next to nothing by most of our standards, you know, and, 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 and materially, but the way she, you know, connected with her family there at the end, the, the, the things that she said about being grateful for what she has and even going through the stuff that she's gone through, it really impressed me in thinking that here's somebody, you know, like you, a peer of yours, that, uh, that has these pressures and these temptations that are in front of her, but yet seems to be navigating it pretty well. Jesus, when he was talking in this verse, he was talking about, he was telling a parable, if you're not familiar with the story of the soils and how the, a farmer will plant these different soils, but most of the soil doesn't take root because it might be um, thrown on the path or it's not, the, the roots aren't deep enough. And so this is what happens and very, very little of it actually produces, you know, fruit because of these other things that get in the way. And that's when, he's, when he brings this in. And he says that these things, the, the, the soil that was um, shallow, you know, but had kind of like rocks underneath and not good soil might, you know, might get last for a little while. But in time, it's not going to produce anything because it doesn't have strong roots. And so what happens? It gets choked out. And so that's rep representative of a lot of people's faith and maybe your faith in here tonight. 
maybe it's where you know who God is and you maybe even started a relationship with him, but you've been so distracted by so many other things that have come along that that relationship never got off the ground. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's like that plant that's, that, that's you know, planted in the rocks. It doesn't have any hope of growing or producing any fruit because it's planted at the wrong place. There's no roots dug in. And so I think that is where this whole idea of distractions is so relevant to us. Because the things we talked about earlier that were distractions to us, that you guys listed, they're not bad things. Boys are not bad things most of the time. Phones are not bad things most of the time. Uh, you know, sports is not a bad thing. Grades is not a bad thing. But listen, guys, if that if that is your total focus, one of those things, or a combination of 15 of those things are your focus, you can focus on a lot of good things and miss the best thing. You can focus, you can spread yourself so thin that you focus on, you keep yourself so busy with so many different things, and they're all good hobbies or passions or pursuits or pleasures, and they're not necessarily sin or bad. It's just that you keep yourself so busy doing all those things that you forget about the best thing. And so all these things together are shallow, and they don't take root, and they don't, they don't ultimately keep you focused on your purpose or what should be your purpose in life, which should be my purpose in life, which is that first verse, undivided devotion to God. And it's just so easy for it to happen to any of us in our life to get distracted like that and then be unfruitful is the last word in that verse. And, I mean, do you think that you guys are too young to, like, be able to evaluate or analyze, you know, that you your life right now, that you should be, you know, producing fruit? No. Heck no. Obviously, that's why I continue to work with students all these years because I believe First Timothy 4.12 that, you guys should not be looked down because you're young, but you should set the example for other people in your life and love and faith and speech and purity. And yet the biggest hook or the biggest arrow I think that we're going to talk about all month amidst all the other big ones that seem more intimidating is this one of distraction because it gets everybody to some degree. And again, you can just be like, looking so good on the outside, coming in here at youth group, looking good like you got it all together, and, you know, you play your sport, or you do academics, or you do music, or you do whatever you do, and you do it well, and, you know, that's what you're known for, that's what you're all about, and all that, and you come in here, like, but ultimately, you know inside whether that's just a, a facade, and whether all that stuff is just a cover for the fact that you really don't have any deep roots, and you really don't have a relationship with the one that we're supposed to have our undivided devotion with and focus on. And I think if there's one thing that the enemy does more than anything else is key in on this busyness and this area of distractions. Because he can, he can, he can lure you with all the classic sins, you know, with lying and cheating and stealing and lusting and, you know, I mean, the list goes on, the Ten Commandments and, and more. But you don't think about being busy, too busy, or being distracted as a sin. And so the subtle one that it is slides in there and it takes over and all the enemy has to do is remind you just how busy you are. You don't have time to get up a few minutes early and read your Bible. You don't have time to pray before you go to bed. You don't have time to go and serve other people in, in this way because, I mean, look at my schedule. I don't have time for any of that. And yet, again, we're doing good things, a lot of good things, and missing out on some of the best things that God has for us, which is what somebody said, maybe over here, uh, you know, is basically just loving and serving people. That ultimately is what God has called us to do in this life. And in doing that, we grow in that undivided devotion to him. So I finished with this verse, Galatians 1, and you'll, you'll, you'll bring it back up in your groups tonight. But Paul is very clear with this, and he says, you've got you to ask yourself a question. You've got you to be real with yourself on, on this, in this area of distraction, and just say, hey, you know, what 
are my priorities? You know, what, what, what am I really all about? And here's the verse from Galatians 1. I don't think it's on the screen, but you'll, you'll see it in groups. It says, he says, am I now trying, am I trying to win the approval of people or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I wouldn't be a servant of Christ. You've got to ask yourself that question and decide that for yourself and be real and say, am I going to live my life to please myself? Ryan, you said it, yourself. We can be our biggest distraction. Am I going to, am I going to live my life to please myself? Am I going to live my life to please somebody else, the people around me? Or am I going to live my life to please God? And you've got to answer that question honestly. And then once you get the answer to that question, then that, that shapes everything about your focus for the rest of your life. What are my priorities? What is distracting me? You know, um, am I going to focus on what, <laughs> what is, is it all about me? Is it all about my girlfriend or my, you know, uh, whatever per people I'm trying to impress around me or is it actually all about my maker and the person who loves me and has a purpose for my life if I'll pay attention long enough and, not, and be focused long enough to hear from him and spend time with him so that he can speak words of life to me. God, thank you so much for the time we have here tonight and on Wednesday nights to try and focus our attention on you. Jesus, it isn't easy. I say this stuff up here and I struggle with it too. It isn't easy to live a life free of distraction. Distractions are constantly around us. But God, I'm thankful for your word which steers us back it brings us back, it rallies us back to this idea that our undivided devotion should be centered on you. And then let the other pieces fall where they may. There's nothing wrong with these other things. And you've created us to love life and to pursue dreams and to pursue uh, hobbies and all of these things. But help us to evaluate our priorities and what's truly important in our life. If we're spending no time with you and spending all of our time on all these other things, and that's just, that's out of whack. We need to get that straightened out. We need to fix that if we're serious about living our lives with you as the center and the priority. So God, that's a process. But would you help us, first of all, acknowledge where we are, acknowledge our need for you, and then to do something about it. Help us to live lives that are less complicated more simplistic and more focused on you, your word, and your love for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship.